A couple of days ago, I released my unboxing video for the Camus C12. However, this did arrive about three weeks ago, but I wasn't able to release any videos until the launch date, which is now, um, or at least a couple of days ago it was. So it is available to buy now from directly from Camus uh, as of this moment. So if you want to find out more, do check out their website. I'll drop a link below the video, guys. Um, also, just a matter of note, um, I do have a 5% discount code. So you can run that against uh, your purchase as well. But yeah, so it arrived um, like three weeks ago. I've used it now for a good couple of weeks, testing it and recording a lot of footage for my main review. However, I'm not ready to put that main review out. Um, since they do take a little bit of time to uh, put together, um, you know, so I wanted to at least put an early impressions video out there for you after just a couple of weeks of use. I've tested it now in nine games, uh, the nine games which I'll be featuring in the review as well. And uh, everything has been running absolutely fine, no problems with compatibility, the setup was absolutely spot on, no problems, very much like the Camus C5. Um, which I also have reviewed. Again, if you haven't seen that review, if you want to find out more about the Camus C5, I'll drop a link below the video. Uh, but yeah, I was very surprised actually and impressed by the Camus C5 on how easy it was to set up in every, every game. I had no problems, just threw lots of games at it and it just worked absolutely flawlessly. And uh, that's exactly what I'm seeing now with the C12 as well. So that's good to see. Um, yeah, so very happy with that. Um, so the difference between this one, the C12 and the C5, is um, I think I'm sure you know already, is the power output. This has 12 newton meters of the torque, so Camus C12, and Camus C5 is 5 newton meters. So obviously the C12 and the C5 is the uh, denotes the actual torque output. Now the torque output is constant torque at 12 newton meters, so it does peak at a higher um, actual measure as well so I'd imagine we're looking about 14 Newton meters of peak torque which is pretty substantial um, and uh, I don't think anyone will need anything more than this really uh, quite honestly it comes it, it, you know it gets to the point with uh, these wheel bases where um, I think you kind of end up paying more for no real reason um, you know I do wonder why you know wheelbases above 20 newton meters exist because I'm really not sure what the advantage is. Um, I haven't used a 20 newton meter or above wheelbase but I have used uh, 15 newton meter wheelbases and those are incredibly powerful you don't need anything more than that and I, I would suggest that most people won't need anything more than this either. It's, it's plenty of torque here, plenty of power. Um, I'm running the force feedback I think around, I think about 40, 45% in this car in Autumn Ballista 2, and it does vary per car, per game sometimes, I might run the force feedback a little bit higher depending if it seems like it feels right that the car should have a little bit more weight from the wheel. Uh, but right now this uh, Mini feels absolutely perfect for me, uh, maybe if I'm running a Formula car I might, be able to, I might want to run the force feedback at like 60%, but even so, um, that shows there is a plenty of extra overhead should you need it and that's obviously a good thing. Uh, the other thing you might like about the C12 over the C5, not just the power, but um, you can replace the steering wheel rim. This is a 70mm bolt pattern and like the C5 where the wheel was basically um, hidden behind the button plate, it was integrated um, into the wheelbase so you couldn't do anything with that. It, you basically what you what you uh, got is what you were left with, unless you wanted to try and dismantle it, which I don't think anyone would really want to do. Um, but with this one, you can just see, you can just take the rim off and actually add your own. So that's good. Uh, for the review, I'll, I'll do, I will actually try some different rims for you. Uh, maybe I'll put out another video soon and I'll just try some different rims so you can just see the fit of it and just see how it works um, and just see what we can get away with. Uh, but yeah, I'll probably do something like that as well, guys, so stay tuned for that. But what we have here is a 300mm um, uh, wheel, round wheel, which is perfectly good. Um, it's a decent wheel, wheel on here, you know, nice kind of universal size. I don't think anyone's going to have a problem with that. I think it's um, absolutely fine. Um, the actual um, 
button plate on here is really, really well laid out. Plenty of buttons, dials, um, joysticks on here as well. But for more details, just check out my unboxing because I go into a lot of detail there. But yeah, really high quality controls on here. These buttons on here feel like knitter buttons, really high quality buttons. And it's all backlit as well, um, RGB colors, which you can adjust. So you can adjust the button colors. You can also adjust um, the actual um, RGB uh, rev light as well. Uh, you can change that color layout uh, in the software. It's very easy to do. It comes with a bunch of presets, or you can just basically do your own, which is kind of nice. And we have a three-digit display, which you can show um, either the speed in miles or kilometers or the gear. So it's up to you. I can feel the track surface and small bumps and undulations coming through the force feedback. As I turn into the, this corner, there's a build up of weight. And going around this dip, where it's a bumpy track, the wheel is sort of trying to fight me. It's not just the weight of the wheel but I can feel the, 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 the movement of the weights moving around, trying to fight me, trying to fight my input. And you should be able to actually see the wheel kind of doing its own thing. So I'm getting a good sensation of feeling the car uh, through the force feedback. It's very informative, there's good detail there. If I uh, go over these uh, rumble strips, there's a very bumpy sensation coming through the force feedback. So that's very nice as well. So uh, let's do that again. Yeah, very nice. So I can feel the weight transfer coming through immediately as I weave the car. It's very smooth, smooth and progressive. So I really have a nice feeling, good sensation of um, the grip of the car. And as I overdo it a little bit, just feel that weight uh, just kind of moving around like a boat. So there's no notchiness, uh, the wheel is uh, rotating nice and smoothly with just the sort of feeling of the force feedback coming through. So it's very clean. Yes, yeah, nice detail, nice detail coming through the, the force feedback effects. I'm very happy with it. I'll go into more detail in my review, but everything so far is uh, panning out very nicely. Um, it's a nice feeling wheel. Yeah, it's enjoyable, enjoyable ride to this, uh, driving this car. And it's just uh, fun feeling the force feedback as well. It's informative, it tells me what the car's doing. I'm able to control the car, drive the car, and it's telling me, you know, it's feeding back, telling me what the car's doing, communicating um, if the car's straining or feeling, uh, you know, nice and stable. So, yeah, the force feedback is really producing all the right things here. Feels good, yeah. Feels very good. And and so far, um, out of all the games I've tested, everything just feels consistent. Some games are better than others at delivering force feedback. Um, Autumn Blister Two is a particularly a particular one I like to test with for these driving talks and for a lot of my review testing. As uh, the force feedback, there's, a lot, there's plenty of sensations coming through, so it's a good game to test it with. Where some other games. You know, sometimes are a little bit lighter on the force feedback um, effects coming through and uh, aren't as informative. So um, I like to test it with games which have, you know, which do produce a lot of detail just through the force feedback effects. So I'm able to just kind of get a good understanding if it's, uh, if the wheelbase itself is able to reproduce those effects. Another game I like to test it with is R Factor 2. Um, and uh, yeah, that felt great through this wheel as well. So yeah, so far very happy with the results. Yeah, it's good, it's good fun drive. 
Okay guys, well I'm going to end it now. Um, I've been yabbering on far too much already, but um, so far, yeah, really enjoying it. Um, and the other thing I'll say about this uh, wheel, which I said about the uh, Camus C5 as well, is how solid this is. You can't get any flex out of this thing. I mean, it's rocking the monitor, but the actual wheel itself, the wheelbase, there's no flex whatsoever. I mean, you can get some flex from this direction, from the rim, but side to side, lateral, pressure I'm putting a lot of force into this nothing this thing is just absolutely solid well there you go that's it for this one um, hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any questions do drop your comments below the video and indeed if you own one of these if you pick one up do let me know give leave your feedback as well and share that with the community guys uh, but yeah that's it for this one uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more videos on the Camus C12 because there is more to come Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, happy simming and bye bye.